Hey, it's Pastor Mike. If you enjoy listening to this podcast and make it a regular part of your day, can I ask for your regular support? We really can't make any of our sermon series or devotions without the continual support of friends like you. Time of Grace, in case you didn't know, is 100% donor-funded, meaning it is your gifts that make it possible for us to use television and print and digital media to share the good news of God's amazing grace. Just click on the link in the episode notes, and thank you for all of your prayers and all of your support. God bless. Even if you're not familiar with the Bible, you're probably familiar with the phrase David and Goliath. Well, what was the story about? Goliath was a Philistine, and the Philistines were enemies of the Israelites. David was a teenage shepherd boy at the time, and he was too young to fight in the military, so he was bringing food and supplies for his brothers who were on the front lines. They were in Israel's military when he saw him, Goliath. Goliath's description was impressive. He was nine and a half feet tall and um, his armor that he wore weighed in at 125 pounds. The tip of his spear weighed 15 pounds. You add to that the fact that the average male at that time didn't grow to much more than five foot six inches tall and you kind of get the picture, right? Uh, What was, here's the, here's the David and Goliath story in a nutshell. So that, that the Israelites and the Philistines are lined up for battle in the Valley of Elah. On the one side, you've got the Philistines with their giant Goliath barking out challenges against Israel and Israel's God. On the other side, you have the Israelites cowering in fear, wondering how they're going to defeat the giant Goliath. Well, Goliath's challenge was kind of simple, hand-to-hand combat. Instead of the entire armies going to war against each other, let's settle this with just your best soldier against our best soldier. Um, and, And whoever wins... Well, they win. If if Goliath wins, then the Israelites become the Philistine slaves. And if the Israelites win, well, then the Philistines become the Israelites slaves. Very, very simple. And and so, like we said, David is too young to be in the military, uh, but his father wants to get some nice home-cooked bread and uh, to, to his brothers and, and, and also some cheese for their commanders. And so David's on a, an errand run to the front lines, and he, um, he hears Goliath challenging Israel. And he gets annoyed because he's not just challenging Israel, he's challenging Israel's God. And so he just goes from soldier to soldier talking about this. And Saul, the king, hears about it and he summons David before him. And David basically says, this teenage shepherd boy says, you know what, I can take Goliath down. And he says, I I fought as a shepherd against lions and bears and I came out the winner. God was with me then and he'll be with me now. And shockingly, King Saul says, okay, uh, you can fight. And Saul tried to put his own armor on David, uh, but David wasn't used to armor, not to mention Saul was a foot taller than everybody else. It probably didn't fit super well. No, sword and armor weren't David's uh, weapons. He was good with a slingshot. And so David went down to a stream and he picked out these five smooth stones and each stone would have been like two to three inches in diameter. And when flung by someone who was a master with a slingshot, these stones could reach speeds of 100 to even 150 miles an hour with the stopping action of a 45 caliber pistol. You think it would hurt to get hit in the head with a 90 mile an hour fastball? Just imagine what these stones would do. So, so Goliath is, he's barking out these challenges and, and, and ridiculing David. And David runs to the battle line. He picks up one of his stones, puts it in his sling, and starts swinging. You can just picture David standing there and hearing the slingshot, slingshot until the moment was right. And he releases the stone and smack, Goliath dies in one shot. Nothing like a stone in the head to shut up a giant, right? Well, here's my question for you. Who are we in this account? This may surprise you. We are not David. We're more like the Israelites cowering in the hills. If you read this story and and take away from it that like David, you need to be one who's going to take down all your giants in life, well, you're going to be disappointed. Because what happens when you try to control your anger or or, um, control your tongue, but you know what, both get the best of you? What happens when you can't kick the addiction for more than a week? What happens when you, you try and try at your marriage, but you know what, he leaves you anyway, or she ignores you anyway? Friends, you don't need a moralistic, be more like David story. You need a David, and you have one. 
in David's son. A thousand years after David, there was one who was willing to stand in the gap between the giants that stood against us of sin, death, and the devil. And Jesus took down those giants by his death on the cross and by his empty tomb. And when he did that, he won. You won. And so now, even in this life, in some sense, the Christian loses every battle because we're in a sinful world. But because of Jesus, you've already won the war.